As part of this topic, let us get an overview of data types using Spark SQL. Syntactically, Hive and Spark SQL are almost same and hence we should be able to use Hive language manual and get an idea about data types. You can actually click on this page and then you can actually go to this create drop truncate table link. In this, you have a big rectangle which will give us the complete syntax of create table command and you can go to the data type. The data type is broadly categorized into primitive type and special types. These are all special types. As part of the primitive type, these are the types that are available for us. Now you can actually get more details with respect to special types such as array type, map type, struct type, union type by going through these things and you, you can get an idea. That being said, all these data types are broadly categorized into numeric, alphanumeric or string, date and timestamp, special data types and boolean. When it comes to alphanumeric or string, char and varchar are inherited from uh, our traditional RDBMS databases. String is introduced as part of Hive and then uh, inherited into Spark SQL. Depending upon your requirement, you can choose whatever data type you want to go for. I typically use string, which is a lot more widely used compared to char and varchar in Hive or Spark SQL. That being said, if the file format is text file and if you have special types uh, defined as part of the table creation, then we need to consider reviewing other clauses under delimited row format. If you go to the language manual and if you scroll down, there is row format here. In that we have delimited fields terminated by. If you are using text files and uh, if the data is comma separated, you can specify fields terminated by comma. Also, if you are using uh, types such as array, map, struct, etc., we have these additional clauses that can be specified as part of the delimited. For array and uh, struct, we can use collection items terminated by. For map, we can use map keys terminated by. Uh, so and so forth. Even lines uh, delimiter can be uh, specified here. The default is new line character and we don't need to override that uh, in many cases. However, for other things we might have to use uh, whatever is relevant for us rather than using the defaults. Now let's get into the simple example so that we understand all the important aspects of the data types. For this I will be creating a students table under a database called as ITVersity underscore SMS. If it is created earlier, I just want to drop it first and then create it afresh, then connect to the database and then create the table. And if you review the create table command on top of create table students while specifying the columns such as student ID, first name, last name, phone numbers, address, etc. You should focus on the data types here. Student ID is integer and hence uh, I'm using int here. If you have too many students or if the student ID starts with six digits or seven digits and if you want to come up with a bigger integer compared to typical integer, then you can leverage begint and you can specify the data type as begint here. When it comes to first name and last name, they are of type string and hence I am specifying them as string. If you are inheriting this table from traditional RDBMSS and if they have varchar, you can specify varchar with the precision or scale here. I always confuse between scale and precision. You can actually tell how many number of characters at max can go into these fields using varchar in circle brackets. When it comes to phone numbers, I want to define it as array of string because a student might have multiple phone numbers and I want to store it as an array. That's why I have specified like this. So if you want to create a column in a table with a special type array, each element need to have the data type and you have to specify that data type here. That's where array, angular brackets, string come into picture. When it comes to student address, address contains street, city, state and zip and I want to define a struct for that and hence I'm using struct and you can actually use angular brackets like this. Then you can separate the columns along with the data types using comma. So street is first column of type string, city is second column of type string, state is third column of type string, and zip is fourth column of type string. And this is how I want to store the address. Then we also need to review these uh, additional uh, clauses under row format. In this case, if you do not specify these, it will use ASCII null characters as default. In our case, I want to make sure that the Typical fields are separated by tab character and hence I'm saying delimited fields terminated by backward slash t like this. When it comes to collection items, both array and struct are considered to be collection items. I want to separate the elements using comma. That's why collection items uh, terminated by comma is used here. Let me create this table. We can describe this table to see the columns and its data types. So let me say describe students and then run this and you can see the details here. Student ID is of type int, first name and last name are of type string, phone numbers is of type array of string, student address is of type struct with four fields, uh, each field have its own data type. As the table is successfully created, let's get some data into this table and see how data is stored in this table. 
are the files that are related to this table. First, I am using this simple insert command where I am saying insert into students values one Scott Tiger null and null. So I am inserting one record where student phone numbers and student address are null. Now I should be able to run this query and I should be able to see the results. Both student phone numbers and student address are null. We have only ID, first name and last name as one Scott and Tiger. Now if you want to insert a record with a value in the student phone numbers which is of type array of string, this is how you can pass the array of phone numbers to student phone numbers and you should be able to insert. So let me run this and then let me run this query to see both the records. The second record uh, with student ID 2 have first name as Donald, last name as Duck and you can see the phone numbers here. Student address is still null in this. Now let us insert these two records where we are actually inserting addresses and this is how the struct type values can be passed. As we have four columns, both the structs for these two records contain four values, street, city, state and address, not address but the zip code and now these two records will be inserted with addresses. The first two have addresses as null, these two will have addresses as non-null values especially of type struct. Now let's review the data here by running this query and let's see the results here. Now let's understand how the data is actually stored in the files pointed under this table or pointed by this table. For that I am actually creating a variable called as username this is color code and then running this command to actually get the list of files as we have three insert statements with four records it have actually generated four files you can see all the four files here. If you want to validate this from the terminal, you can launch the terminal by saying new terminal and then you can actually say hdfs dfs hyphen ls slash user slash dollar user slash warehouse slash dollar user underscore sms dot db slash students and you should be able to see the files from here also. You can see the four files here and you should be able to do the cat on all these files by saying hdfs dfs hyphen cat and then you can actually copy this uh, path paste it let me copy it once again hdfs dfs hyphen cat i have copied it this time and then pasted it here and then slash star and hit enter and we should be able to see the results you can see that uh, for one and two the address is null. For two, there are four numbers which are comma separated because while creating the table, we have used this additional clause called as collection items terminated by comma. That's why four numbers are separated using comma for Donald Duck, even for the Mickey Mouse and Bubble Guppy. When it comes to address, even address is considered as collection items only, which is of type struct. And you can see that all the attributes with respect to address are comma separated. It is due to the fact that we have specified collection items terminated by comma here. So this is how you can actually create a table with uh, not only the primitive types but also a bit uh, advanced types and then insert the data and preview the results to understand what is happening internally. If you are using a special file formats such as ORC, Parquet, etc. We don't need to worry too much about this row format clause. It will internally maintain whatever metadata that is required to interpret the fields appropriately. Only when it comes to text file, which is default, even if you do not specify stored as text file here, it will be used as default. If you don't have stored as clause or if you have stored as text file, you need to make sure that these additional clauses are included while creating the tables not only for regular fields but also for advanced fields such as array, struct, etc. That being said, this is a quick uh, detailed overview about uh, data types. Depending upon your problem statement, you should be in a position to explore and start using it and then you can take it further.